Hi, today we're going to look at the date system in highs. So this was added last year by Greg and it gives us a few really useful functions and we're just going to look through them now. So we've got four functions and I've written them out here and I'm storing their result in variables. So we'll go through these one at a time. So I'll just move that down there. So the first function is called get system time ISO 8601. And this returns a string, it's a date string. So let's just write that out, returns a date string. And let's print that out so we can see what it looks like. So we've got the year, the month and the day. So it's the 3rd of January. And we've got the time, 1241 and uh, the seconds there at the end. And I think the Z at the end means time, the, the time zone, but I'm not 100% sure about that. But this is a standard ISO date string. We can change this true parameter to false, and that will remove the separators between the different segments. Change that to true again. We can see those separators come back. We can see it down here a little larger in the console, actually. So we can see those separators there. Okay, so that's the first one. Let's look at the next one. Let's clear the console. So this one returns an int, an integer. And this gives us the current system time in milliseconds. So the moment you do it, that's the time it is now and it's given in milliseconds. And we can see the function is called date.getSystemTimeMS. And we'll print this out. So there we go, that's the number of milliseconds. Okay, these next two functions are conversion functions to change milliseconds to ISO and ISO to milliseconds. So this one returns a string, converts MS to ISO. So we can see what that looks like. So what I'm doing is I'm passing in the milliseconds that we've got from here, and I'm setting true, and true is like this one, it's just for the separator of the output string. So that comment there. So, so we can see the milliseconds have been converted to a date string, and we've got the separator. Again, I can set that to false to remove the separator. You'll generally want the separator, I think, because you'll most likely be using this for displaying a date. Uh, so this uh, milliseconds is the number of milliseconds since the 1st of January 1970, and it's called Unix time. And it's just a general convention in computer programming languages that they count from that date. So if I put zero here, it's going to give us the 1st of January, uh, midnight, the 1st of January 1970. So there, we can see that come out there. And actually it's showing 1 a.m., not midnight, but I, I see the time zone has got plus one hour there. Okay, and the final one converts the ISO string back to milliseconds and returns an integer. So there we go, we can just see the current time now as milliseconds. Okay, so now I'll show you a practical use for this. And there are, there are all kinds of use cases where you want to compare dates and things, and most of the time you're going to be dealing with the date in milliseconds. I can't think of many occasions when you'd want it as an ISO other than for outputting it for display, but probably most of the time it's going to be milliseconds. So let's write a little function that you might put in your program to uh, perform some kind of check. So in this case I'm going to say it's an update check. So let's say after seven days you want to check for an update, and then you wait another seven days and then you have your program check for an update. So it's not checking too often, just every seven days it'll do a little update check. So we're not gonna write the update checker. I'll leave that to you. We're just going to write the thing that tests the date. So we'll write a function, we'll call it um, check for update. And we're gonna pass into it the last time it was checked. And that would be a value in milliseconds that you would store on the user's computer somewhere. So you'd, you'd probably just store it in a file, in app data, in a text file, and then you could always know when the last update was performed. Let's just give ourselves a few more lines here. There we go. Okay, so the first thing to do is get the current time 
now in milliseconds. And we'll call it now. And we know how to do that. We've got this one here, date.getSystemTimeMS. Okay, so now what we need to do is subtract the last checked uh, date, which is in milliseconds, from the current uh, date, which is also in milliseconds. So we'll have an if statement, and we'll say if now minus last checked is greater than or equal to seven days. So we're going to have to figure out this seven days thing in a minute. The number of milliseconds in one day is 86,400,000. So if we multiply that by seven, we know how many uh, days it's been in milliseconds. So do 86,400,000 multiplied by seven, that gives us seven days. We also need to take this side of the equation because that's also in milliseconds and we need to divide that by 86,400,000. So if it has been seven or more days since the last check, we will write a little message. So this is where you would call your function to actually do the update check, but we'll just print to the console. Otherwise, let's say up to date. Okay, now we can test our function. So we'll call our function down here. And we've got zero here for now. And it's going to say we're up to date. Now this is a kind of edge case, but when it's zero, that probably means that there isn't a last checked value, right? If, if you're doing this in a real world situation, if this comes in a zero, that probably means there isn't a previously checked value you haven't checked before. So you probably want to do a check. So what we need to do is in here, we need to account for that. So we can say if last checked equals zero or this stuff, which we should put in parentheses. So now we'll do an update check if the last checked is zero. There we go, do update check. Now let's do a test to see if it actually triggers after seven days. So we'll get the current date again in milliseconds. And from that, we can subtract a few days. We won't do seven to begin with. We'll do less than that. So again, 64,400,000 multiplied by, let's say, three. So it's been three days since the last update check. So last checked is going to be three days ago. And actually, just to verify that, we can print this out using that, uh, where is it, milliseconds to ISO, where is it, milliseconds to ISO, milliseconds to ISO 8601. So with today being the 3rd of January, we should see from this console print the 31st of December. Oh, got a typo, let's see what's going on there. Get system time milliseconds. Saying that one is not correct. Let's just see. Milliseconds to ISO. Oh, it's capitalized. That's why. ISO. There we go. And yeah, so it's coming out with the 31st of December 2023. So it's coming out three days ago. So that proves that this is correct. That little formula there to find out uh, to get the date three days ago. Right, so now if I press F5, it should say up to date because it hasn't been seven days, it's only been three days. There we go, up to date. Now if I change this to seven, now we should get the do update check. My apologies, I see what I've done here. We don't actually need to multiply this side of the equation by 86 million. We only need to do the division on that side. I bet some of you already spotted that mistake. So we can just remove that there. Okay, well, let's do that again. There we go, do update check. And let's again change this to something like uh, the F5 will do, and we'll hit F5, we're up to date. And if we go more than seven, so it's been 10 days since the last update check, it tells you to do an update check. So that works really nicely. Um, in your do update check, function that you'll write 
let's do it like this actually. I'm not going to write the update function, but what you would need to do at this point is write the current date, the last time it was checked basically, since we're doing the check here. So you would update the stored last checked variable. Does that make sense? So you'd write this value to a file basically. You take now and write it to a file. And then when you do your update check, you would read it back from a file. And it's giving us an error because that function doesn't exist. So there we go, we'll just comment that out. Okay, so that's all for this one. Uh, the date functions are really useful. It was really nice of Greg to add this. And this is the thing I use them for mainly is checking for updates. You could also check if a license key has expired or a subscription has expired, that kind of thing. So it's a very handy thing to have, especially if you're doing um, communication with a server. Right, thank you for watching. Uh, the project for this will be on Patreon and links in the video description on YouTube. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them below the video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.